Welcome everybody. This is Professor Dan at the University of Colorado Boulder. And today we're gonna to talk about some column buckling and we're gonna talk about how the moment of inertia can be calculated for these types of problems. So when we have column buckling, we have this equation here. The critical um, force, the critical load is pi squared EI over L squared. And our question said, which of these shapes is gonna be most resistance to column buckling? So when we get a problem like that, the first thing we wanna do is make our assumptions. Well, if these are the cross sections, we know that our length is gonna be the same. We also know that we're gonna assume it's the same material, so our elastic modulus is gonna be the same. We know that pi is gonna be the same. So all of those terms don't matter. And the only term that does matter is our moment of inertia. And so we need to figure out what our moment of inertia is for our column buckling. And one of the things we said is that there are two general moment of inertia. There's the moment of inertia calculated about the centroid in this direction. And there's the moment of inertia about the centroid in that direction. And when we think about moment of inertia like that, one of the things we can do is look for symmetry. So something like this uh, box beam and this circle beam have symmetry, so it doesn't matter. They're going to be the same. But when we have our I-beam, and our just column, we got to be careful. And so let's see how it works. So the key is with column buckling, buckling, your column's going to buckle at the lowest I. And when we're asked for, we want to find the lowest I for each column. And then we want to find the one that has the highest lowest I. Okay, a little confusing, but I think we figured it out. So let's start with our easiest one. And for rectangles, we know that I equals 1 12th BH cubed. So if we have our axis that way, we have I equals 1 12th, base is 1, H is 5 cubed, and that is equal to 10.42. If we take it around this axis now, we see I2 is equal to 1 12th, times five times one cubed, which is 0.42. And our units are like length to the fourth or millimeters to the fourth, something like that. This is a lot lower, so it's gonna buckle at that first. Okay, so now which one do we do next? Well, we could do this I-beam, but one of the things we can notice is that if we look at this axis, our I-beam has two horizontals, and so does our box beam. And our R beam has one vertical, but our box beam has two verticals, so our box beam is always gonna have a higher I than our I beam. And then if we look at this axis, whoops, stay here, buddy. We see that, again, our I beam and our box beam have some common themes, but our I beam has one down the middle, and our box beam has two. And what we know is that I equals I X sub C plus A D squared. And so these on our box beam matter even more in this direction. So our box beam is always going to be stiffer. So I'm just gonna look at the box beam. And so when we do our, our box beam, there are two different ways that we can kind of think about it. The first and the quicker way is to just say that this is a box and if it's a solid box, it's going to have 1 12th, 5 times 5 cubed. And it doesn't even matter which way I look at it because our base and our height's the same. But it's also going to have this interior part removed. So we can subtract that off. So we can say minus 1 12th, 3 times 3 cubed. 1 12th, 5 times 5 cubed is... 52.083, one, one twelfth, sorry about that, one twelfth, three times three cubed is 6.75. So we just subtract those and we get 45.33. But let's say we didn't see that. So let's say we didn't see that. And so how would we use our table that we've learned from our book and in class? Well, we can break this thing up into variety of different um, different 
rectangles, but let's take this axis for one. You'll see if you, I'll leave it for you, but if you take this axis and any other rectangles, you're going to get the same number, and that number is going to be 45.33. But this, let's see how we can do it. So we can take this, call that one, call this two, and we see there's a symmetry there. One and two are going to have the same moment of inertia about their centroids. And we see that the centroid of rectangle one and the centroid of rectangle two are all along the same line as our body centroid. So our distance from our individual part centroid to our body centroid is going to be zero. And now what is our I X sub C? So that's one twelfth times one times five cubed. And that's 10.4. Uh, let's see, it's, um, yeah, 10.42. And so we have 10.42, but we have two of them. So that's 20.8, okay? So now what about three and four? Well, now our base is three, our height is one. So one twelfth, three times one cubed. So that's 0.25. But in this case, our area is two or three, our base is three times one, so it's three. And our distance, well, we have half a cube, a full cube, and another half a cube to our centroid. So that's two squared. So three times two squared is 12. 12 plus 0.25 is 12.25. And again, I have two of them, I have three and four. So that's 24.5. I add up our contributions from one and two plus our contributions from three and four and I get 20.8 plus 24.5 and I get 45.3, which is the same as what we calculated doing it the other way. All right, so our last one is this circle. So this circle, our equation is pi r to the fourth over four. All right, so how do we do it? Well, with our circle, we can do the same thing. We can assume it's a solid circle. So it's pi times, and our radius is 2.5 to the fourth over four. And when we do that out, we get a value of, doo -doo -doo, whoops, hey. It's not the right section. Um, let's see, that's 30.7. And then we can subtract off minus pi times 1.5, that interior circle, that's the whole. Oh, come on. And that is equal to, it's actually 4.0. So 30.7 minus 4.0 is 26.7 units. We'll just say millimeters to the fourth, but our lengths are to the fourth. And we always want to come back and answer the engineering question. So it says, which one of these is most resistant to column buckling? Well, which one has the bigger eye? Well, this one's 26. That's for our circle. Our box had 45.3. The answer is A. Our box is most resistant. All right, I hope that helped. I'll see you in the next video.